the second generation version of Toyota's Mirai is a model the brand wants you to choose on its own merits, not just because it's a hydrogen fuel cell car. Its predecessor was first to market with this technology, and this replacement design aims to play a key role in popularising it amongst forward-thinking ordinary customers. Ultimately, this contender needs a far more developed hydrogen station infrastructure for popular acceptance, but it's a fascinating glimpse into all our motoring futures. To drive, this Mirai feels very EV-like, which is what you would expect since when it comes right down to it, this model is powered by electricity. It's merely delivered to the wheels in a different way. In the main, the power to drive this car comes from its FCEV fuel cell. Think of it like a little onboard power station surrounded by hydrogen tanks feeding in gas. The fuel cell creates an electrochemical reaction to convert the hydrogen to water, the byproduct of which is electricity that powers an electric motor on the rear axle. The energy for that comes from an adjacent little 1.24 kilowatt hour battery which powers the car under low loads or harsh acceleration, but mainly motive energy comes from the fuel cell. With the first generation Mirai, Toyota was so focused on making this innovative FCEV technology actually work that thoughts of drive dynamics were somewhat secondary. This Mark II model is different. The old car's Prius-derived underpinnings have been replaced by a much larger TNGA chassis borrowed from the Lexus LS limo. And the fuel cell stack has been reduced in size and moved forward to a place beneath the bonnet, improving weight distribution and freeing up space for a third hydrogen tank beneath the passenger cell that's increased the claimed driving range to 402 miles which you're going to need because at the time of this test in spring 2022 there were just 13 hydrogen filling stations in the whole of the UK. At least when you find one you won't have to wait around for charging like with a conventional EV. Tank replenishment would take no longer than it would in a combustion model and it'll cost about the same, around £80 for a full fill. If you can make all of that work for you, then there's lots about the drive experience to like. True, this Toyota feels rather uncomfortable being thrown about, but you wouldn't want to regularly do that in a car of this size anyway. Better to ease back and enjoy this Mirai's whisper quiet refinement and exemplary standards of cosseting ride. The electric motor generates 180 bhp, which isn't quite enough for a two-ton luxury saloon, but exercise the most urgent of the provided drive modes, sport, and you should find it sufficient. Life as an early adopter of new technology has its challenges, but there's a small select group of customers who will recognise in this Mirai a car worth changing their motoring lives for. It's not likely that you'll be coming to this second generation Mirai after experience with its predecessor because hardly any examples of that older model were sold in the UK. But if you were, you'd be astonished at the transformation that's taken place here. The previous Mark III Prius-derived ugly duckling transformed into a graceful swan that shares its GAL platform with a Lexus LS limo. In profile, you immediately notice just how this car has jumped up several classes. 85 millimetres longer than before, sizing it somewhere between a Mercedes E-Class and an S-Class. So, though the EV price comparison pictures it against a Tesla Model 3, the size stat is more Model S, from the outside anyway. At the front, this car is far better looking than most EVs. The low set look aided by the central positioning of the blue tinged Toyota emblem below the headlamp line, just above this imposing trapezoidal lower grille, which is underlined by a bright molding along its bottom edge. The lighting's arranged in a two tier design with on the upper level, the largest headlamp units ever fitted to a Toyota. These featuring this distinctive bright plated surround. And at the back, well, there's a very rakishly angled screen and an integrated boot spoiler that creates a clear definition between the upper and lower sections of this rear end. The sense of the car sitting low to the ground is emphasised by this dark 
trapezoidal lower bumper section, the arched angles of which are echoed in the lines extending from the lower rear corners to these horizontal light clusters, which emphasise this Mark II model's 70mm width increase. You might disagree, but one of the things we find most refreshing about this Toyota's design is that it isn't an SUV, which would have been the easiest way to hide the bulky fuel cell powertrain. The smart exterior styling disguises that outside, but the packaging challenge will be much more difficult within. So let's take a look inside. Get comfortable and it's all quite pleasing. The central hydrogen tank beneath the car necessitates this wide, high centre console between the seats, but it's been smartly designed and creates a pleasingly enveloping, almost cockpit-like feel. Your eye is immediately taken by this wide, shiny black control panel that starts on the left with the 12.3-inch infotainment display, then stretches right across the top of the dash, recessing into the 8-inch instrument cluster screen you view through the three-spoke wheel. Almost everything else seems to sit the other side of this strangely curving silver strip, which starts by your left knee and flows up past the stubby little black gear stick and over towards the passenger side along the top of the slim horizontally arranged vents. Soft touch surfaces are almost everywhere you look and shiny piano black trim coats the center console. And the door cards feature double stitching and slim color customizable ambient lighting strips. But like the plushly upholstered seats that never quite convince you that they're real leather, this cabin design never quite convinces you that it's anything other than high-end Toyota, when for the money you'd hope it might be Lexus-like. Let's take a look in the rear, which unfortunately is where things start to unravel a bit. The useful 140mm wheelbase length increase of this second generation model to 2920mm doesn't unfortunately translate into standards of legroom that are anything like class competitive. It might also feel a bit dark and dismal back here were it not for these little rear quarter light windows, though that's not an issue with this top spec model courtesy of its huge dual pane sky view panoramic glass roof. Let's finish with a look at the boot, which you might expect it to be fitted with a powered opener at this price. However, it's not. The button is a little difficult to find at first, but can alternatively open by the key fob or from inside the car. After the disappointment of rear seat accommodation, we weren't expecting too much from trunk capacity, and rightly so, as it turns out, because there's just 321 litres of it. Yes, 10 litres more than you get in a Ford Fiesta. Still, the designers have done what they can. It's rather neat in the way that you can hook the top of the load floor cover on top of the boot opening, and there are recessed areas on both sides so that you could, say, get a set of golf clubs in widthwise. The area on the right has a compartment for the battery. This feels like a significant moment in fuel cell development, the most credible hydrogen-powered model yet made. And like Toyota, we're disappointed that so little progress has been made on improving the hydrogen filling station infrastructure since the original Mirai model was launched. One day, hopefully, that will change. But in the meantime, Toyota is getting on with perfecting this model and has done a thorough job here. Even if you happen to actually own a hydrogen filling station, you might have had trouble justifying the original Mirai with its awkward looks and restricted driving range. Well, there are no issues of that kind with this second generation design. Toyota has again set the standard here. Other brands should watch and learn.